This ending is insane. I was watching this film like how I am watching the US election. I was like, ah, ah, mm, ah, what is happening? Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's really good. I was so shocked. Hey everyone, welcome back to Mr. Teach Film Preach. And today we are talking about the movie Summer of 84. This is gonna be a part of what my wife likes to call the Halloween Hangover series. Yes, cause I watched a bunch of scary movies and didn't get my butt and gear in time to get them out for Halloween. And I will be much more prepared next year. So I apologize for that. But I wanted to get through these last three films that I was able to watch and really be able to dive into and really appreciate as a horror film. It's really hard to make a, a horror movie or a, a suspense thriller film that is really intriguing and pulls me in for the entire time and I really invest in the characters. Going to see Summer of 84 has been on my watch list for a very long time. I saw the trailer for it back in 2017, maybe beginning of 2018, and then went, I need to see this film. And then I, I didn't watch it. I never saw it. And then during Halloween this year, I made an effort to really watch these films that I've been putting off for a long time. And I don't know why. I love watching new films. Now I have to say going into this film, I was a little bit skeptical because, you know, kids and trying to figure out a mystery in their neighborhood. It's, it's been done before. And I just think it's one of those ideas that has been recycled a lot. So I was hesitant, but I was curious. I still wanted to go check this film out. This movie is about a few kids in the neighborhood that believe that the neighbor living across the way from them is actually secretly a very successful serial killer. And they begin to suspect that because there's kids going missing in the town, in the neighborhood, uh, that this is the man behind all of these killings. And he also happens to be a police officer. Main guy in the film really suspects and believes uh, this. You know, he has some run-ins with the neighbor and he seems friendly and he seems like a good guy, but there is definitely something bubbling underneath the surface that the kid sees it and he, and, and he just catches glimpses of it, but he enough that he starts to think that there is something seriously wrong with this guy living across the way from him. Well, he and his three other friends, he convinces them to uh, join him and to investigate and to figure out what is really going on with these killings in, the, in this town and uh, trying to find this serial killer. And I have to say, oh my God, you guys, yes, yes, they did it. Someone finally made a really great, great, not just suspense horror film, but involving like kids and coming of age. And it was so good. I was so surprised. I love to be surprised. And I have to say that someone who's a writer, someone who creates theater and film myself, I, I often look at these films, especially horror films, and have a hard time investing in the characters. And usually it's because it's really poor writing or it's uh, something that they've set up in the story itself that I don't really connect with. And it's hard to write a really good suspense horror thriller film. I, I think it's one of the hardest genres out there to really do successfully and to accomplish it successfully. This film does it. And it was surprising and wonderful. I loved these four actors in the four the four boys they did such a great job it was amazing chemistry between the four of them it, re it felt very authentic it felt very natural for them uh all four young young men great performers and it was so great to have like the different personalities there was like the main guy who uh had probably cried wolf one too many times he has all the conspiracy theories papers all around his room you know he's probably seemed a little crazy or a little uh off-putting at times from his family and his friends and uh, so people have a hard time believing him when he's trying to convince people about this serial killer. You're sort of the, the badass friend, the one that's kind of 
been in an abusive home and uh, a little bit of a rebel. Then there's the friend who's just a total utter nerd and uh, he is very smart. He's very scientific, but he's also very scared all the time. And then there's the, uh, the bigger guy who is like the main character's best friend, his confidant. Four of them together have this beautiful friendship and really funny. Uh, the dialogue that they have back and forth with each other is hilarious and it's very uh down to earth now you think a bunch of glorified care bears and hoods could take down the empire they are aliens and they're highly intelligent scientifically the perfect woman and very exciting even as uh, an adult watching like young young kids or young adults that even with the age of the kids i was totally invested i was there with them i was laughing with them they're very funny together another great thing about this film is that they give each character real weight it's not just like the kids are there uh the three other boys are there as background characters to support the, our main character all four boys have something going on in their lives that's troubling or uh dealing with something that's uh, very serious to them at that time in their lives becoming uh teenagers and they all deal with something different which was great and i had mentioned in my uh vampires versus the bronx film uh about kids and having some side plots with the kids backstories that maybe didn't quite work this film made it work and did a great job and what is so awesome about this film is that there's actual consequences there's real world consequences in this film and i love that about this film oftentimes things get brushed over or you know they do something and then you never hear about it again that that doesn't happen in this film at all in fact the things that happen really have a big pull throughout the rest of the film and uh and some of the decisions that they make have uh, great consequences and some horrible consequences. The writing was just spot on. The directors, wow. Can I just say that they did a fantastic job. First of all, these are French Canadian filmmakers. These are Canadian filmmakers. That's a victory for Canada, baby. Oh, Canada. The directors of this film, Anouk Whistle, Johan Carl Whistle, and Francois Simard, had to get the French names right. They did such a great job directing this film and crafted not only um, an awesome story visually, but some really intense and terrifying scenarios. This film has a little bit of a slow burn and, uh, and a brewing mystery, but it keeps you invested the entire time. And you just laugh with the characters, but you also know there's some actual real consequences that are gonna happen. And those directors do such a great job of weaving that throughout the entire story. It really felt like the 80s, but without being too retro, without Without, without playing too much on the nostalgia of of the 80s, uh, which is happening crazy right now. The 80s and 90s are in the big nostalgia phases, right? And, and sometimes it can be overbearing and sometimes it's too much. But this film didn't feel like it went too overboard with it. And in fact, the 80s was a perfect setting for this, making it sort of like those slasher films but without actually being a slasher film itself. This is much more of an investigation, mystery, thriller, suspense thriller than it is like an actual legit horror film. Though there are horror aspects in the film and a few jump scares that are really great. Emergency meeting, treehouse, now. Mackie is the Kate May Slayer. Mackie's a cop with a sick reputation. Isn't counting on us. This movie has one of the best endings I've ever seen, not just in a horror film, but in a movie. I, I, I'm shocked. Right when you think that the film is going to go one direction, it takes you in the completely opposite direction. Thank you for taking risks. We have filmmakers out there that are doing risk taking and not everything is just safe and fluff and polished crap. Yes. There is a moment in this film where it's just like dead quiet and the camera is just slowly starting to zoom in just just ever so slightly just starting to zoom in down this hallway and you think you're gonna see something and then something else happens and that moment you're i was like love this ending and they didn't play it safe and they took some risks and there's some very very violent parts near the last especially the last 30 35 minutes of this film and it really pulls you in and man oh man and oh you feel for the characters and and you want to be on their side and you see what it, this whole story actually does and the consequences from 
our our protagonist's decisions and the fallout of some of those decisions he made brilliant they executed brilliantly i don't want to give too much away i don't want to say like what it is but you'll know the moment and then e the last 10 minutes of this film <sighs> thank you to the filmmakers and writers amazing turn on its head and a great twist without making it cheesy and oftentimes some twists you know it's like oh it's the protagonist the whole time and uh no like they did a great job of still making it a twist but sticking within the confines of the storyline and it making sense they did such an amazing job crafting such an interesting story such a fun story but also having some some really terrifying parts to it coming of age story just set within like a thriller horror genre that is so cool that is uh, a really interesting idea and I love that the horror genre in the last five six seven years have has changed a lot I I often say that around the time of the conjuring that was sort of the time where we had this like great reboot of of awesome horror scary films and great different ideas and uh and, and really changing and twisting on its head what the horror genre actually is and this is another great example of that from really up and coming great filmmakers i'm so excited to see what they're going to bring us next whether it's a horror film or uh, a drama or whatever it is i'm really excited to see what these guys do because they are such uh, interesting and provocative filmmakers and uh, I can't praise them enough for that. The only thing that I can really say that I didn't like about this flick was I wish that they had adverted our expectations a little bit for who could have been the serial killer and I, I think if they had played with that a little bit more uh, that could have been more interesting but then at the same time I think like it might have actually pulled away from the story of getting to know these uh, four boys really well and really caring about them because I did like I wanted all of them to to make it and to find out the you know and become the heroes and really be able to be champions and and, and the audience is on the side of the characters right from the get-go you love them you you feel sorry for them you're empathetic towards them and uh, you almost just want to feel like you want to hang out with them and I think that's why this film does work in that way because you care and you are so invested in these guys and their relationships I, I kind of hoped at times that they would avert our expectations a little bit more about who actually was a serial killer and I felt like the guy who played the cop was I mean he was good when he got to go full blown and got to be you know the person who we actually find out he is but until then you're you're kind of back and forth on him and and maybe it was just the choice of the of the actor but I felt like at times he actually wasn't really that menacing there wasn't this bubbling of evil and this bubbling of like mm, there's some malice malice shit going on he actually just seemed kind of like a dork a uh, dorky cop living next door and and that's fine that's the direction that they that the actor was given um but i felt like maybe they could have gotten someone different or d did some different decisions or choices around how they portrayed that character but that's like the slim pickings that's like me picking the the little tiny bit of meat off the bone i'm really just trying to look for things to pull apart besides that this film is going to be a cult classic and i think it's going to be, it's a huge sleeper hit this is the definition of a sleeper hit i think it only got like 60 something percent and the critics aren't connecting with it somehow i don't understand that because this is probably one of the best films that came out back in 2018 <laughs> If you look at that that list of uh, that year for the films that came out, um, there were some great ones, don't get me wrong, but I didn't even consider Summer of 84 to be possibly in the top five. And it is. I cannot believe I'm saying that. Good job, guys. Keep it up. Please continue to make these really interesting, provocative, risk-taking, uh, different, mind-bending, interesting takes on the horror genre. I love it. I was mentioning this in Midsommar. And uh, I'm saying it again here. I think that these are going to be really the most, some of the most interesting filmmakers that are up and coming are these new sort of young, 
uh, directors and write and screenwriters that are trying to take the genre in a different way in a different era. And I appreciate that. So if you guys want to check out a film that's really fun, that's really interesting, it's got a great mystery, uh, there's some great wonderful characters in it, it's very suspenseful and there, it, there's some thriller aspects to it and there's definitely some some scary parts and a couple of jump scares. It's got some great writing, wonderful, wonderful performances, some fantastic direction and just an overall great experience for the horror genre and it's definitely a win and it's a Canadian film. Boom! I love it. I'm going to go ahead and give Summer of 84 an A. Yes, this movie definitely deserves that grade. I think, honestly, besides the um, the cop living next door, that's the guy who's the possible serial killer, maybe having a different performer or, or a different performance come from that actor would have uh, enhanced this film. Besides that, this movie is killer, huh, pun intended. I highly recommend this film. Definitely go check it out. I think you'll have a great time as I did and you'll really appreciate what they chose to do with the script and the, the direction that they took this film in. So go check it out. Let me know what you guys thought of this film. I don't know, maybe some people didn't like the ending and thought it was a little too dark and a little too crazy, but uh, I really appreciate it actually. If you have an opinion on that, put a comment down below. I hope you had a great Halloween. Please stay safe and I know definitely during this time. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Please click down below, like and subscribe and we can come back for some more from Mr. Teach Film Preach. Thanks so much for watching and as always, let's get taught.